Well, here we are. We are starting physics. And we're in the first piece, 1133. We are having to use some of the sine, cosine, and tangent stuff that we learned back in previous math classes. Yay! What I love about science and math is that the higher you get in science and the higher you get in math, the more they intertwine and become the same. And in fact, in college, the science and math kind of become calculus, and it's all calculus. So if you go to college and you're going to go into uh, science fields like engineering, you're going to do a lot more math. Um, hopefully some of this will kind of come back to you as we work through some of these problems together. And you'll remember these, you remember these relationships? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So these are the sides. The relationship between the sides equals a decimal number. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is, again, a decimal number. There is a chart in the pace, but thankfully they do talk about the fact that calculators today, yippee, can do these calculations just like that. Okay, so a lot faster, I'm sure. If you have any scientific calculator, it will do sine, cosine, and tangent. The other thing I just want to remind you of, if you're trying to remember this, do you remember our little saying? We had this back in a math class. Some old horse caught another horse taking oats away. Now, if you say that to yourself ten times, some old horse caught another horse taking oats away, then when you try to remember, oh yeah, what was tangent? Taking oats away. Oh yeah, opposite over adjacent. It'll help, okay? The other thing that's helpful is the magic triangle. So any of these, like that, I'm going to take sign here we can put inside a magic triangle. So we can put the opposite on top, the hypotenuse down here, and then put the sine of the angle. They always use theta, that Greek symbol theta to represent the angle. So we can put sine theta on the bottom. Here's the hypotenuse, the opposite. And if I wanted to solve for the opposite, I would multiply these two together. If I wanted to solve for the hypotenuse, which we are in some of these problems, we would cover up hypotenuse and take the opposite side and divide by the sine of theta. So that's a little shortcut that maybe you remember, and that will come in very helpful as we do some of these problems. Let's talk about two problems similar to 22 and 23. See how I put these in parentheses, kind of like quote unquote. It's not the exact same numbers, but we'll show you how we do them, okay? And then you can go back and actually do 22 and 23 using the numbers in your pace. So let's walk through a sample problem like 22. We're going to have a force acting this direction at 90 degrees to a 50 Newton force acting in this direction. So they're both pulling on this same point. And the question is, what will be the resultant? Now imagine, what if there was a, like a sled here, okay? And you have two boys. One boy says, I want to pull the sled this way. And the other boy, equally strong, is saying, I'm pulling the sled this way. Which way is the sled actually going to go? Well, it's going to kind of, since they're both of equal strength, it's going to kind of split the difference and go right through here. Okay? So one way that we can do that is we can turn it into a rectangle and find that length. Or another way is we can pick up this vector and we can move it here to the end and then we take the final, the resultant, and it goes from the beginning and connects to this end point. So now this is also 50 and this is 50 and we want to find out what is that angle and what is the force pulling in that direction. The easiest is to find that resultant force. So let's remember a little Pythagorean theorem. Remember Pythagorean's theorem? Uh, we always use C, A, and B. And we say that C squared equals A squared, A squared plus B squared. So if we take 50, get your calculator, do it times 50. Whoops, I did times negative 5. That's not good. 2,500 would be this side squared. It's going to be the same for that. So now we can add them together. 
and we get 5,000 for the hypotenuse, but that's not the answer, okay, because that's C squared. So now we have to do the square root of that. I think in the pace, they wrote something like this, which you might see and say, what in the world, 5,000, or, you know, they had some number here, and then they have it raised to the 0 0.05 exponent. What? Yeah, well, 0 0.05 is like a half, and raising something to a half exponent of one half is the same thing as the square root, okay? So, <clears throat> let's do the square root of 5,000. Aha! We get 70... Point seven one zero six seven eight one one eight seven. Oh boy, Mr. Anger, now what? Well, because we have two significant figures in both of these numbers, we have to round our answer to two significant figures. So we can't write that whole thing. And we don't even round it to one decimal or two decimals. We just say two significant figures. So we would have to round that to be... 71, okay, newtons at, now we're going to figure out how many degrees is this angle right here. <clears throat> so let's take the 50, which is the opposite, 50, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 71, and that gives us 0.7, okay, so opposite was, what did we say, 50, and the hypotenuse was 71. So I get 0 0.704, and now we're going to, because we're doing the sign, we're going to do the inverse sign, or second function, or shift, okay? So I'm going to do shift sign of that number, and voila, I get 44.766995321 which, rounding it to just two digits, would be 45 degrees, 45 degrees. All right. Now, let's talk real quick about what is the equilibrium. What does equilibrium mean? <clears throat> Remember we said we had two boys, one pulling this direction at 50, and the other boy pulling that direction at 50. So the resultant would be that the sled is actually going to move that direction with a force of 71 newtons, 45 degrees. So kind of split the difference between these two. It's moving that way. The equilibrium would be what force does their dad have to be pulling on it? <laughs> what that force does dad have to be pulling on the sled to keep them from being able to pull it at all? They're both still pulling with an equal force, but the sled isn't moving. That's the equilibrium. Okay, so it balances out the resultant. So the resultant is the force going that way. The equilibrium is going to be the same force, 71 uh, newtons, but it's going to be at exactly the opposite. So we're going to take 180 plus 45. Um, I would say 225 degrees, but they might, um, in the, I forget, I think maybe in the score key, they, in, they see use east and west and north and south or something like that, so 45 degrees south west, something like that. But I added 180 to the 45 degrees. All right, I'm going to stop this video for now, and then when I come back, I'm going to do a quick video for 23, and then we need to look at uh, 24, and 25, and 26, and 27. But actually, as I'm making this video, it's supper time, so I need to stop, go home and eat supper, and I'll be back.